So, <clears throat> when we discuss about ray optics, we always assume that light is a particle. Fine. And if it is a particle, it will travel, you know, straight line, its path will be well defined, you will be able to track what is the path of the light and, you know, like that, the way the particle travels. So, you will be able to see the path as a straight line. And until it hits an object, or suppose there is a re reflection, its path won't be changed. Fine, so it will travel in a straight line. Fine. So, we have discussed about reflection as well as refraction when it comes to ray optics. Fine. Few of you can sit there, two of you can sit there. You do too, you do. So that I don't only totally look this side. Okay. So, <clears throat> now we have discussed initially itself that light uh, can behave like a particle and light can behave like a wave also. These are the two behaviors of light. Depending on the scenario, light will behave like a ray and depending on some other scenario, light will behave like a wave. So it's just like, a, like human behavior. If suppose some uh, good scenario happens in your life, you'll be happy and in some other scenario, you'll be sad or angry or you know, you'll be showing different kinds of behavior. Fine. You'll be showing multiple kinds of behavior. But light has only two behaviors. As a ray and as, as a wave also. Now, as a ray, we have studied it in great detail. Now is the chance to study the light when it behaves like a wave. Okay? Now, what is a wave? What it is? Wave is a disturbance. Simple. It is a disturbance that travels in a medium or not? It need not travel in a medium. Okay, just a disturbance. Fine. Mechanical waves travel in a disturbance. Have we learned about mechanical waves? In class 11, we have learned about mechanical waves. Fine. So, in class 12, we are learning about electromagnetic waves. Light is one of the EM waves. Okay. So, it doesn't need a medium to travel. Fine. So, we are going to study light as a disturbance or as a wave. Fine. So, um, light, first of all, right now, light is a transverse wave. Okay? Light is a transverse wave. Fine. So, whatever basic things we have learned about transverse wave in wave chapter in class 11 still holds good here also. Because the name of the chapter, when you studied the waves, was waves only, it was not mechanical waves. So we have not just studied mechanical waves in class 11. We have studied few general things which is true for all the waves and then few specific things which are true for mechanical waves. Are you getting it? So general things still hold good. Like for example, interference that we have learned, Reflection we have learned, all that happens for light also. Okay? Now, although we have done a good amount of study in class 11 itself about wave, but we will not start midway. We will start again from the scratch as if you do not have much knowledge about it. Fine? I am just telling you all these facts so that you will be able to correlate what you have already learned. Then your learning or grasping will be faster. Fine? So, um, you know, Newton was the one who studied light as a ray. Fine. He was fascinated with the idea that everything is everything behaves like a particle. He had already developed mechanics. So he thought, of, okay, light is also a particle. So he started understanding light as if it is a particle and studied its all the behavior as if it is a particle, like reflection and refraction also. He thought that it is it is the behavior of a particle because of which reflection and refraction happens. Fine. And if reflection and refraction happens because light is a particle, then the speed of light in a denser medium would have been higher. Okay. Why is that? You can, you know, draw an interface like this. 
and suppose light hits the interface like at an angle of pi, then if it is going in denser medium, what will happen? This becomes R which is less than I. Fine. Now, this interface, suppose this is the interface on which there is a particle that comes in. So, light is a particle, Newton said light is a particle. So, light is coming like this and hitting the interface. Which direction interface will apply the force? Upward direction, normal direction only. Fine. So, the interface can only change the velocity along the normal direction. Interface cannot change the velocity along the horizontal direction. Are you getting it? Suppose velocity here is v1 and this is v2. So, horizontal component of this velocity is what? v1 v1 sin i. Fine. And its horizontal component will be v2 sin r. Fine. So, what will be v2 equals to? v1 into sin i by sin r. Right? And we know that experimentally r is less than i. So, this bracket term has to be more than 1. So, v2 has to be more than v1. Fine. Right? But later on we came to know, you know, when Newton has suggested all this, okay, when Newton has suggested all this, you know, there was no experiment to check how much speed of light has become in the denser medium. So, but then if Newton is correct, then the velocity of light in denser medium would be more than velocity of light in the rarer medium, which is of course not correct. Fine. So, this reflection and refraction, Newton has explained using light as a particle. In this chapter, we will understand reflection and refraction as if it is a behavior of a wave. And now we will see that it makes sense. Because right now if we just use particle theory over here, it doesn't make sense. Is there a proper duster? As in that slightly harder one. Okay. Anyways. Give me a piece of paper, that, that is much better actually. If you have some rough, don't give me fresh page. Already written rough paper. You bring only pocket times. This is only in school. So from school, the Hindu. Anyways, so um, <clears throat> that is why we need to understand the wave theory. Now when Newton was developing this concept, First of all, there were very limited resources to check the validity of what Newton is saying. Second, nobody would challenge Newton. Right? So, but then that time also, there were few scientists who were developing the idea of light being a wave. Fine. But then whatever experiment they used to propose, Newton had some counter argument. Okay. So, but then there was one experiment, Young's double slit experiment, which Newton could not explain. Okay? That we are going to take up a little bit later. Fine? So my point is that uh, it, took, it took years and years and effort to create uh, the concepts of wave optics. Okay? Because all the big guys or the big so-called scientists, they were fascinated with the particle nature of the light. Fine. It took a lot of time for wave optics to take shape. Fine. One of the forefathers of uh, the wave optics is Hyrule. Fine. He has actually conceptualized everything. Fine. So we'll start this chapter with Hyrule's principle. Right? Write down Hyrule's principle. Is this chapter done in school or going on? What is the statement? It's going on. Definish. Good. So, Hyrule principle talks about uh, how wave will behave. How wave will behave given the present scenario. Are you getting it? So, Hyrule principle is trying to predict the future of the wave. What the wave is, what wave will do later at that point in time given what it is doing right now. Okay? So, that, that is what we want. Isn't it? You have learned the kinematics V is equal to U plus AT. You are connecting future with present. 
So that is equal to mass time acceleration. If you apply force, there will be acceleration. Fine. So you always want something which connect what is going to happen with the present condition. So Huygens is the one principle which connects that. Fine. So this becomes the fundamental uh, theorem, so to say, for this chapter. All right. So we need to understand it properly. And um, but then before understanding Huygens principle, we need to understand few terms because we will be using these terms again and again, not only to understand Huygens principle but going forward also. Fine. First, tell me, uh, you have any example of a wave in your mind? Ripples in the water. What shapes the ripples in white water are? Circles. Why do you say it is circle? Because you are able to see the circle. And why you are able to see the circle? Yeah, up and down. Up and down, yes. Yeah. Hmm? You can see the difference in depth of the top portion of the Can you explain a bit more? Ripples. Hmm? Basically, what happens in a circle? All the particles together will move up, all the particles together will go down. Fine? So they are in phase. Are you getting my point? What is phase? What is in phase means? In phase means the phase difference is zero. Getting it? They are together moving up and together they go down. And this is two dimensional wave. What about one dimensional wave which is traveling like this? Can you tell me? Two particles which are in phase. So here are few uh, numbers: one, two, three, four, five, six. Tell me any two particles which are in phase. What? One, three, two, and five. One and three. One is one and two. After some time, what will happen to wave? Wave will move forward like this, like this. Where this one goes? It goes down like this. Where this three goes, three moves up. So they are not in phase. Huh? Huh? So which are the ones which are in phase one and four probably? You can say one and four probably. Okay, like that. Fine. So the difference in phase between them is actually two pi. But then after every two pi, anyway things repeat. So you can say that there is no phase difference practically. Okay, so similarly, this is one dimensional wave, but same thing if it happens in 2D, like for example, ripples of water. If uh, the particles in a circle, they are in phase, then together move up and together go down. So we will be able to see the circle. Fine. Write down locus of locus of all the points in phase, locus of the points in phase is called wave front. Is called wave front. So, what kind of wave front we have when we talk about ripples in water? Circular wave front. Locus is circle. <coughs> okay? So, this is the wave front. Find out what can you tell about velocity of the wave, which direction it will be with respect to wave front. What do you think? Maybe it's a perpendicular to the wave front. Right down. Velocity of the wave, velocity of the wave will be perpendicular to the wave front. Velocity of the wave will be perpendicular to the wave front. Fine. So whenever you see a wave front drop perpendicular, you will get the direction of the motion of the wave. Fine. Now, <clears throat> now, the thing is, we need to first understand different kinds of wave front. Okay? Can you tell me what is the kind of wave front a beam will have, a parallel beam of light will have? So like this, so many parallel beam of light comes in like that. Plane. Plane. Okay? So the wavefront is plane. Because when I say light is coming like this, it means velocity is like this. Drop perpendicular to velocity, you get the wavefront. Wavefront is perpendicular to velocity and velocity is also perpendicular to wavefront. Either way. Okay? 
what if you have a line, an infinite line, and that emits light in every direction? What kind of wavefront it will have? Cylindrical. Cylindrical. Okay. What if it is a point source? Spherical. Okay. So these things should be very clear. Okay. These these are like basics. Thumb rule. Okay. So now I write down Heigl principle. So I'll just dictate word to word as it is written in the book, and then we'll uh, you know understand what it is written. It's actually three or four sentences long, so bear with me. According to Heigl's principle, each point of the wavefront, each point of the wavefront, is a source of secondary disturbance. Each point of the wavefront is the source of secondary disturbance. Okay? And the wavelets. Wavelets is just part of the wave. Okay? And the wavelets emanating from these points and the wavelets emanating from these points spread out spread out in all directions in all directions with the speed of the wave with the speed of the wave fine ready again these wavelets these wavelets emanating from wavefront these wavelets emanating from wavefront are usually referred to as are usually referred to as secondary wavelets <coughs> secondary wavelets okay secondary wavelets fine done and, and if we draw a common tangent, <coughs> if we draw a common tangent to all these spheres, see what I said, every point on the wave is a source. So what kind of source it will be? Point source, it will generate spherical wavefront. So wavelets will be spherical in shape, secondary wavelets. Fine, that is what I saying. If we draw a common tangent to all these spheres, we obtain new position of wavefront. We obtain new position of wavefront at later time. At later time. Okay? Any? I mean, at least the meaning is clear. Okay? Let us understand what I mean, what it is trying to explain. Right. So, see, I cannot draw a sphere on the board. Fine. So, assume that this is a spherical wavefront. This one. You also draw it on the board. This one. So this is a wavefront at t equal to 0. What Hyden says? That each point will have its own. Will have its, each point will behave like a source. So, how many points you see here? Infinite. Infinite. Okay. I'll just take a couple of them. So we have five points and all these five points will behave like a source of secondary disturbance. Fine. So it's a point source, so they will emit a spherical wavefront like this. Or I'll just draw one sphere. Okay? Like this. So this is a source, so it will create spherical disturbance like this ok now what it says if you draw a common tangent what will be the common tangent to all these spheres suppose they are infinite in number what will be? another sphere fine this one one will be this and another will be inner also no Draw this first. 
This is called back wave. This is front wave. Okay. So Huygen has randomly assumed that back wave is absent. Okay. He hasn't given any logical explanation, but later on, very intensive mathematical analysis proved that back wave is absent. Are you getting it? So back wave is not present. So if back wave is not present, I don't need to draw the full sphere. Yeah. Are you getting it? So I am not drawing common tangent back side. So I will just draw part of the sphere. Front. Like this. Getting it? And direction of velocity of the wave will be? Perpendicular to the wave front. Like this. Are you getting it? So now this becomes new wave front. At t equal to t and this is at t equal to 0. Getting it? Now what will happen? Each point on this wave front will become the source. And we'll just keep on going like this. Fine? Any doubt? So its radius keeps on increasing. Once the radius becomes infinity, it becomes a planar wavefront. Okay. What if it is a planar wavefront already? This is a wavefront like this. I can assume, let us say these points as a source. So I can draw a sphere of same radius because after same time, same distance will be covered. So this is the new wavefront, common tangent. Fine? Like this. And suppose you have a line of, this is light, okay? It emits lights everywhere, okay? So how will it be the wavefront? Wavefront will be cylindrical. Fine. Each point on the cylinder will be a source. Fine. So like this, if you draw, now I am able to show only like two lines of a cylinder. How many lines are there? Infinite and it is on this circular. So it will be as if small small balls are attached on the entire lateral surface. And when you draw a common tangent, it becomes a surface. So it will be as if radius of the cylinder increased. Fine. So you can apply Huygen principle anywhere. Okay. Fine. So this is the fundamental principle of this chapter. 